Welcome back, you're here with Nate to Eight. This is Cross Beats Production. So first off, I want to say thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching the channel. Thank you for all the likes and subscribes and all the stuff that you guys do. It's really amazing to see that um, so many people are being helped by what I do and uh, people that enjoy my content as well. So without further ado, I want to get into compression and talk about the basics of compression and let you guys understand how to set up a compressor as well to the BPM of your track. Um, it's talked about but not normally explained too much in depth and I want to go a little bit more in depth with the compressor and explain how I normally set it up in my tracks and what I do, why I do it and uh, the types of things that I try and achieve. So first off with compression, um, there's a couple of things obviously that a compressor does um, within your mix. It brings the dynamic range closer to each other. Um, it helps control dynamics in the sense of uh, controlling peaks. It also helps glue things together, the term glue, um, that you guys would hear a lot. Um, so basically, a lot of times people kind of set compressors, but they're not too sure how to set them, and they set attack times, release times, and all that sort of stuff, uh, but they don't really understand why they should set them to the BPM, and if they know they should, they don't tend to know how to do it. So I thought I'd show you guys a way that I've um, been doing it for a while now, and it achieves really good results, and it all... It usually always works pretty much 99% of the time. Um, it also helps to avoid uh, harmonic distortion, which you would receive if you don't have the correct attack and release settings on your compressor. So um, that's usually something that's not talked about a lot as well, harmonic distortion and, and what, what the causes are. So um, I'll just go into first on how I set my compressor and how I go about doing that. And um, I've shown you guys this before on another video or on a sev several other videos on how I do it. But generally what I do is I go to, um, basically, I'll just go to this setting here, just show you what I'm talking about. I go to a page that's called Nick Fever, and um, basically I just type in, it's pretty much, if you go into Google, you can find these anywhere, but it's called a delay calculator, so a reverb delay calculator or BPM delay calculator. If you type in any of that, you'll find something in uh, Google that will show you what I'm talking about. Uh, but Nick Fever is the one that I go to. It's not anything I know about. It's just something I'd have found, came across, works well. Um, so basically, you type in your BPM of your track, which in this case, it's 132. I type that in, and it gives me a note release time of... This is generally for delay or reverb, but it also works for compression as well. And um, it's pretty much set in normal standard notes. So, you know, the normal release times of a 1 8th, a 1 4th, uh, a quarter note, all those sort of things. Um, and then you've got triplets and dotted as well. So it depends on what you're working on. Generally, though, I stick with the standard note uh, release time, so 1 16th or a 1 8th. Um, and I'll kind of go around these two as release times, and then the 1 32 or a 1 64th or even a 1 28th as a attack time. So the reason why I'm using these types of settings is because basically, as you would be aware that with your track, uh, your track's pretty much uh, tempo-based and, well, most tracks are tempo-based to some sort of tempo, at least anyway, and they're keeping rhythm with the track. So it makes sense to set your compressor to have an attack and release setting that is, is in with rhythm of your track as well. So if I can just show you guys on this drum kit that I've got and just, you know, give you an audio example of what I'm talking about so you can see exactly what's going on. So let's just play these drums. I'll turn the compressor off and then I'll just um, play it without it and then I'll turn the compressor on and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So first off, without it. Okay, so we'll turn the compressor on and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. All right, awesome. So I don't know if you guys can hear it on your side there, but it has a lot to do with how the first thing with the kick and the snare, the distance between the two and how they sound um, together. Now, if I was to bounce this track out, you would probably be able to see what I'm talking about more visually, but as a hearing example, so pretty much what I'm trying to aim for is to try and get the kick to continue on almost rhythm, you know, rhythmically to the snare 
So it sounds like they're joined together. Um, it's something that you can do with drums. You can do it with a vocal, I guess, if you are joining a vocal to another instrument. Um, if you were, say, for example, playing a piano and having a, you know, some sort of a singer sing a vocal and wanting them to sound glued together, that's the same kind of theory that you're doing uh, when I'm doing this sort of stuff as well. Um, the reason why I've got the attack setting to 14 milliseconds and the release at 227 is because, like I said to you before, on the uh, release times of this track, so I've got a 14, which is the 164th note, and uh, the 227, which is the 1 8th note. Um, they're the release time, so the release basically is in rhythm with the actual track itself, and it helps guide the, you know, the, I guess the rhythmic nature of the track to to get uh, the exact sound that I'm going for. So obviously, if you can see here, it's got an adaptive setting here, so you can obviously turn that on and off if you wanted to um, on this standard compressor here as well. But you've got the lock, uh, sorry, the look ahead as well, which basically allows the compressor to. I guess look ahead further to know when the transients are actually coming into the compressor so it can prepare and catch a transient early and it's, it gives it an ability to do that basically. So this compressor is quite a good compressor if you're looking at using a stock uh, VST compressor within your DAW, be it Studio One or whatever DAW that you have, you can obviously use the compressor in there, do the same sort of settings and um, set it up this way. So. How does harmonic distortion occur and why does it occur? So basically harmonic distortion occurs when you have the attacks a setting and a release setting that's not set to your tempo of your track or not even set to the tempo, I guess, of the rhythmic uh, nature of the information that's being fed. So if, if you're looking at the um, compressor and you're setting it up, say you just randomly set a 15 millisecond and a 32 millisecond release, um, it may not be in time with the tempo of the track that you're working on and in that case it will cause some sort of harmonic distortion because it's it's creating an issue with the waveform that's going through the compressor. In that case then it's either over compressing or under compressing and uh, creating a, a harmonic distortion and that, that will be heard more or less if you're listening on headphones and things like that. Um, but you generally, uh, you're trying to avoid that type of thing because unless obviously that's what you're trying to achieve but you try to avoid that type of thing because it keeps your signal clean and especially when you're mixing um, multi-tracks, you don't want to add too much distortion to certain things that might uh, queue up your mix or fill up certain spaces that you, you might not be aware of. Um, so I just wanted to bring your guys' attention to that, give you guys an understanding of compression and how um, automatic release times work as well. So automatic, obviously it's what it says it is, um, it's automatic detection of speed like it says here. Um, it actually allows the compressor to read what the signal is doing and it automatically detects and then releases at that. Um, this automatic is basically automatic for the attack and the release though on this compressor. So some compressors like the SSL, you'll see that it has an automatic release just on the release and um, other ones have it automatic, uh, could have an automatic attack or an automatic release or automatic attack and just the attack. Just depends on the actual compressor that you're using to be honest. But um, I just wanted to show you guys some concepts behind compression and give you guys an example um, on this track as well. So without further ado, I'll let you go on this one and peace. <laughs> 